Okay, hi, uh, friends, and we're sorry for the little uh, delay here. Um, hold on, dear. Uh, yeah, it, it'll be right there, right there. Um, we've had some echo issues. And uh, we, um, we're we working with uh, uh, the members of certain groups. Uh, the Lightbridge Circle is one, and uh, we're working with uh, Martin. Uh, if he's come, I think he probably has. Uh, and that's in South America. What country is it? Is it Argentina or? I'm not sure. Maybe someone lets me know that. I'm sorry to be ignorant on that point. Um, Life Bridge Circle. And it's Life Bridge Circle. Okay. Um, hand is not raised. Okay. Mm. And here is Martin. Argentina, correct, right. And you're waiting for the audio, and I hope that um, the audio is functioning. Um, Michael or BL, can you give me a heads up on whether the audio is functioning? It's all good. Okay. And, and LifeBridge's hand is back up again. It went down for a minute, but then it went back up. And Hello. Martin says Argentina. Yes, yes, very good, Biel. Thank you so much. Well, <coughs> we've invited, uh, we had quite a discussion, I think, um, this afternoon about preparing for the uh, year 2025 and for the great conclave. And I think a lot of good points were raised, but there are many people who are working uh, intimately with this kind of uh, process as we're moving forward. And we would like uh, their thoughts about how they are uh, preparing for 2025 and what they think it's important uh, to do as a disciple or a, uh, uh, an esotericist in training to, uh, to do in order to really prepare for this event, which is about, oh, really, well, five and a half, not even five and a half years ahead. So we've invited uh, some people, and of course, everybody is welcome to speak and to share their opinion uh, about the preparation uh, process. That's pretty much what it's all about. Let's see if I have that uh, correct. What have I said? Um, this is an important discussion, including a number of disciples who have been working assiduously to prepare for the coming conclave of 2025. A variety of opinions about expectations and methods will be expressed, and the whole subject may take on a greater depth and meaning. So that's kind of what we had in mind, a little bit spontaneous. You know, we don't have any kind of time limit? Uh, I mean, well, there's a limit, okay. But we <laughs> we do not have any limit time limit here. <laughs> Sorry for this ongoing cough. I've only had it for 55 years. It's not going away. So anyway, do you? Would you like to? Yes, and we can put the next slide. <clears throat> so, uh, just briefly what we have been talking today, or during this uh, one day, if we can say it so that it is one day, uh, concentrated to the festival week of the new servers, and we have had certain aspects yesterday, we tried to talk about the founding of the new world servers, but the discussion went all directions. And then um, today we had the solstice moment, so we were looking very much about the Capricorn. And we will talk about them. But I, we would like to actually welcome uh, our panelists. So could we pinpoint them? I'm not sure that we can do that exactly, because in a way everyone is a panelist. Yeah. Uh, but however, but there are certain there are certain people, people that have really been working with it, and if I 
would leave you out by mistake. Uh, please forgive me for that. Um, so uh, let's see here. So we have uh, from live speech, we have at least um, uh, Alexander Ilchuk and maybe Katya. If she, she might be there. Yeah. Jeffrey, one of our team in the Moria Federation, is uh, present. And we um, have Michael. Let's see what we've got here. Uh, there's LifeBridge and attendees muted. Don't know. Now, maybe uh, it might be. It might be. Uh, Alexander, did you want to say something? Because I've unmuted you. So you might be able to do that. At least it says. Life Bridge. I'm not sure who would be talking. It might be you or it might be one of the members of the group there. If you have anything to say right at this point, we can do it. But actually, let's come back to you. No. Hold on. Martin Deezer, who is a, a member of the uh, 2025 initiative and other initiatives in South America and in Argentina. So he's with us. And... Uh, um, Philip uh, Lindsay, a world traveler and esotericist, he'll have his own perspective on preparation for 2025, and you know, you know probably will include some astrology. And uh, as he's so good at that subject, um, I think that's it. I may have left some people out, but maybe under the title Life Bridge, there are several people so they have assembled. They had a green mic, so... I, I gave them the green mic. So, hold on. We're almost there. Uh, LifeBridge, anybody from LifeBridge want to say something at this point? Uh, hi, Michael. To you. Hi. Hello, everyone. Sasha. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yes, and remember, everybody, because of our uh, limited uh, speaker system, Speak uh, maybe a little stronger than usual and slower than usual. And then the people who are here in in our group, and uh, Tui and I also will be able to hear and to understand. And you see, I'm trying to do that myself. Oftentimes I speak rapidly, but now I'm slowing things down so that you can uh, hear me. <clears throat> so that's just... Uh, a little bit of advice. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so uh, here is, uh, we are gathered in a, a small circle out of our larger circle. And I will ask Steve to introduce our so, uh, circle. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Alexander. Hi, Michael, to you. Um, Philip, um, Martin, all the gang. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. Uh, I suppose we should say festival week greetings. Merry, happy, no, let me see. <laughs> strong, strong festival week to us all. Yes. Uh, okay, wonderful. Thank you so much. Uh, okay. <clears throat> the, um, and just let me just say that um, the circle, we have a big circle. We have, um, I think, about 35 people. Um, um, who have been here this morning and will be working again this afternoon in the circle and very much working within the idea that this is simply a metaphor for all of the circles wherever we are meeting, such as your circle in Finland and all the other circles that are meeting around the world. Mm -hmm. um, and there's a terrific, there's our conversation this morning and our meditation work was very aligned to not feeling that we have a sense of real understanding and mm. truly trying to enter into the meaning of silence mm, and yes. what it means for particularly for the new group of world service this huge group in humanity on the discipleship path um, and trying for the Easter for this small tiny little group of us who are interested in the Alice Bailey teachings trying to penetrate an understanding of the deep silence that is at the heart of the new group of world servers mm. at this stage. Mm. Excellent. So, Excellent. Thank you. Wonderful. And welcome, warm-heartedly welcome. <laughs> so how many of you are sitting there now? 
there are, there are five of us now, but we have a lunch break now, so more people will be joining us as they will done with their beautiful meal. And why don't we? <laughs> <laughs> Hello to everybody. Hello, my name is Isha. Hello. Hi, Katya. Uh, Katya is here. Hello, Katya. Hi. And Maria Cristina Donadieu, we <laughs> love you so, we love you all. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Well. Uh -huh. Okay, that was. Okay, so that's good. Anyway, and, and welcome to everybody. There and uh, and Martin, are you by uh, your your oh. yourself uh, right now, or do you have? Uh, with you, uh, other other people. Martin, Diesel. yeah. Hello, Michael. Yeah, hello, everyone. Uh, from well, I'm speaking from Chile myself. Uh, I'm from Argentina, but yes, I am here alone. Uh, there is uh, somebody who we worked uh, very close with during this year, who is also here uh, listening and taking part. And well, happy to be with you. And of course, I think this is a very important uh, issue to to focus, to explore. I think, as Steve was saying, uh, our minds uh, are not yet uh, very well equipped to deal with this situation. Perhaps because it has to do with another kind of energy that is incoming, and we need to uh, to embrace it in a different way. So probably there is a huge learning process uh, going on, and. and this has to do with our preparation for 2025. Maybe new methods, new ways of approaching, new planes involved. Um, not particularly new, but maybe uh, more work on the aesthetic plane and, and trying to overcome probably a, a very strong tendency that we see nowadays towards uh, um, a war of ideas and a very strong presence in the mental concrete plane in which uh, we are walking, I think, in a very dangerous path uh, because sometimes we are not being able to overcome uh, this apparent duality. Mm. So, well, let's see. Maybe uh, together we can build something and uh, better understand all this. Yes, maybe we'll all come away with a little deeper understanding. In general, I just want to say hi to Al and to Annette uh, Ebert and, and uh, Antoinette Dutois. And uh, Asher is a member of our group, and she's listening from another place. And uh, uh, Beverly, hi. And my son Brennan is here too. Hi, Brennan. Um, Carl and Cassandra. Uh, and Dennis uh, Galen is here. Uh, Diana, uh, Elena, I think from it's Greece, I believe. And Francis Godet. And, Frida and Jeff, yes, and Heike, Helen. Uh, we're you know we're jumping around from New Zealand to Canada and back and forth, and lower part of New Mexico and so far the upper part rather. Helen Brochu, and Isabel, and Joe. She's part of our team, and Joe He uh, from Korea, I believe, and Karen Gritska, and Catherine, um, Kim Knight, and Laura. Uh, Gyurka and uh, Leslie and the whole life bridge or at least part of the life bridge circle that uh, were introducing themselves just a little bit and Louise Langdo and uh, Martha Mickelson Denmark and Martin thank you and Mary Bell Knudsen Michael Starcrow was here uh, I, he doesn't seem to be here right now but uh, we welcome him and uh, Michelle and Myrna and of course Philip and uh, uh, Raisa and Roger and Sholene, uh, Suzanne uh, Miller and Teresa and Tia. Hi. And Vera, I think in uh, New Zealand, I believe, or, or Australia, I think it's New Zealand. Uh, Ivenica and Zanidi and Ann Veronica. And over here on the side uh, of the staff, we have assisting uh, uh, BL Allison and Michael, Stacy and Dewey and I are over here as well in case something goes wrong and we don't know how to fix it. And Philip, <clears throat> where are you now situated? Hold on. We gotta let him speak if he's gonna talk. Hold on. Just one. Okay, now we. Now we can. Philip, you're green. 
Oh, hi. Uh, yes, I'm in, I'm in Geneva at the moment. I, uh, I was here for the conference yesterday for Lucis, for the one day conference. So I'm oh. going to be here for a few more days before I go back to Portugal. Great. So you are in Europe at the moment. So welcome. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, so happy to have all of you. And remember, everybody, speak slowly and a little bit stronger than you normally would. Okay. And, and then uh, also, thank you, Philip. Welcome. And then also, Jeff. He's there too, yes. Yes, yeah, so maybe we can open the mic for you also that you can say hi. Okay, some of these people have been working a long time on the subject. As a matter of fact, Jeff's mic hi. is open. Yeah, hi, hi. Is my sound okay? You can hear me? Uh, yes, and be as distinct as you can. You wouldn't believe the tiny speaker we're working through. Oh, okay. Well, hi, everyone. It's fantastic to be um, involved in all of this, you know. And, of course, um, well, you know, I'm happy to jump right in here with the discussion, you know. Um, excuse my cold that I have, but um, I'm, we've had a bit of snow in the ranges here. Um, well, you know, with this um, coming up of the conclave, it's, uh, although there have been many, this one is quite unique to my way of thinking. And um, this, from from our perspective, it's unique in as much that we're called to cooperate as um, specifically as we can, you know. And and this is, of course, very new in, in regards and is related more specifically, of course, to the group, the new group of World Service and, um, you know, the, the phenomena of the organization of the Arjuna Center as that relates to, you know, the planetary logos. So, uh, pivotal event. So, um, you know, my, my thoughts specifically about the approach to this is, in myself, I always default back to DK's meditation work, you know. Yeah. That would include the full moon contact meditation and therefore followed by the, the Dina 2 meditation work, you know. And uh, so that's what I'm beginning, you know, as we enter into this um, coming uh, conjunction, which is um, about as potent as it gets, that's what um, will be taken up. Yes. See, so in a, in a way, each one of us is now kind of sharing how it is that we are preparing for the conclave and uh, yeah. recommendations to others uh, in their preparation process. Now, yeah. Julia, you have some yeah. things that... Welcome, Jeff. Jeff. And so I think thank that... You. We, thank you. We will come back to you again. But um, we are just going through a little bit what we have been doing here. So we were continuing this uh, ringing the bells. So just a few words few uh, things aligning us and um, hopefully these sounds are coming through with these little microphones. So we will ring you bells here from Finland. So, yeah. so we have been using these bells now in our meditations. We have been holding silence very much and still continue doing that. Today we were concentrating upon the idea of um, uh, the great conclave and uh, how we are preparing for that. The striking thing is that we have only five years, almost five years to go. And that should shake us all up and to make us to think 
what is our particular responsibility in that if we think that we have such we have been so in one sense you have this image of the goats who are climbing the mountain and that in that sense that is like a symbolism for us that uh, the group new group of our servers they are those who should climb the mountain together <clears throat> we have been the next one yeah. so we have been contemplating the keywords for Capricorn, lost am I in light supernal, yet on that light I turn my back. This impulse, this um, coming via Capricorn, when it really works within us and when we think about how um, uh, Ven Venus is uh, working within, is that we have to come back and to do our job there's something in uh, in our soul that the soul can cannot relax the body bodhisattva soul cannot relax if there are anyone behind who is suffering and so the disciple comes back and there we are alone in the smoke, in the fog, and we should know what we are doing. So we are contemplating our role. What is that we Good. should be doing? Well, you can have the next one. Okay. But again, during this time, we can align this idea of the unicorn. Who is the fighting part? within us who is fighting against the personality who is fighting against the darkness so uh, unicorn we know that the unicorn is representing the symbol of uh, uh, the initiate the real initiate and um, but that spirit that that uh, particular thing makes us become victorious and uh, it is said that unicorn is a victorious beast. Hmm. And that's why we see the uh, unicorn eye. Triumphant fighting beast. The triumphant yeah, fighting yeah. beast. So we were talking then about Ashna Center. And uh, what is that? Oh, well, that is... Uh... No, you. Oh, oh, oh! Yeah. I'd be quiet. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so we were we were talking about that. What it really means that we say that the group, the uh, World Service Group, is um, the Ashna Center of our God, Planetary God. What what is that really? What Ashna Center is? What it does? So this piercing thing into the vision for the future for humanity is one of those things what we could again discuss today. The light which is there seen on the top of the mountain. So our individual uh, responsibility is now to light this light, the fire of love on the top of the mountains or if that is not yet very high mountain at least that it is a little hill and upon those hills and mountains we should have our individual light shining so this was a like a shortcut about these ideas what we have been talking and now we will the next one and the next one we have an image here oh yes this one, <laughs> that we are now under these tremendous energies pouring via the Capricorn constellation, which is hitting our solar system and then Saturn. Saturn. Oh, something's going on. 
your there hand go. is yes. going on. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. Something is strange. I'm sorry. It's Michael who is strange. It's not all. Uh, well, what do we do? I don't know. This so, is very. What? So it keeps on. <laughs> this. Anyway, we are there under the influence of Capricorn, which is then coming to our solar system. And uh, uh, the Saturn is that planet which is the most important for us uh, during this time. It is the uh, planet of disciples who is disciplining all of us. But certainly when we think about this new group uh, and um, the servers, it, uh, that is wonderful in that sense, this image. If you look, those who are behind the master, there is the inner ring, and then there is this outer one, what I think could be symbolized like the new group of world servers. If we think that these uh, uh, around the Christ, there are the most and the closest ones, his masters, and then is the group on earth who is supposed to be the one, the trusted one. So if we come together in that image that we all are under or at the, the feet, at the feet of the Lord, and um, we have come together to discuss about this most, I think, most of the uh, important events for all of us, the coming Conclave 25, when so many plans are going to be established. And how do we finally come in that sense together that we can share our experiences, that we are not only quoting the books, but how can we share this living thing in us, how we are real human beings, real fellow beings to each other, so that we can fulfill that dharma. So we can I think um, one of the things given by the Tibetan is that the uh, Lord Maitreya, the Christ, was experimenting with organizing an ashram on the outer level. And he had the beloved three around him, they, they were called that, and then the, the remainder of the disciples making up the twelve. Then there were another 70, which I think uh, they were highly motivated, and I think they stand for the new group of world servers, and there were the interested 500, which I think stands for the men and women of goodwill. And so <clears throat> there's this outer expansion of people um, in the work, but less and less centrally related to the dynamic core of the work. Now, I suppose the people who are gathered here really want to consider themselves to be members of the new group of mm -hmm. world servers. This is a very uh, exacting uh, task. So if we just have a question, and, and the panelists could be answering them first and then all the others. So this uh, coming next five years, what do they mean to you? Have you been thinking about that? Just, do they mean anything? Some have deeply, huh? But <clears throat> others we could think more, perhaps. So look, we'll um, we can take uh, the responses, especially from the people at first who have been uh, deeply uh, involved in the preparation kind of work. Mm. So what was the question again, dear? <laughs> <laughs> what do these coming five years mean to us? Do they mean anything And, I'll, and if, you, if you raise your hand, you can either write it down, you know, uh, under the question mark, or you can say something uh, if you choose. And let's keep our comments uh, relatively succinct, as there are quite a few of us. But I would like a oh, good life bridge. So the life bridge has something to say. Okay, you're on life bridge. So we'll try to be efficient with time and raise our hands right away. <laughs> good. 
So what's happening? Are you so, going to say? Okay. Yes. Uh, Is it okay to start? Yes, yes please. Yes, very good. I think what's happening now that what we all together experiencing, working as unified world group during the festival week is one of the best things that we could do and we are doing this mm. and specifically what's happened uh, yesterday with the global silent minute with activation of so many people uh, coming together in simultaneous unanimous meditation i think in a way it was in a unique experience and by some estimates about 200 million people uh, were reached uh, out and received this information. We don't know, of course, how many participated, but that was a very powerful activation of the world group and people of goodwill. And so let's keep visualization that this people in seven years, they will be actively participating in the wor work meditative work during the festival week in 2026. Not necessarily being like doing esoteric meditations as we do now, but focusing on the fields of service and precipitating this extra zodiacal energies of Capricorn into their areas of work. That in its turn will create such an impulse till the next seven years cycle that will definitely can set up humanity on the path of like mm. development that the hierarchy wants and if this would be achieved the dynamic definitely would be obvious by 2025 and when the hierarchy meets on their conclave they might consider this dynamic in whatever decision they will be called to make and i don't think it's of any of our direct related business to us because uh, we're not going to be invited to that conclave most likely but the result of our collective effort this week can create the wave that can result in a dynamic that would be uh, desirable for the 2025 mm -hmm. yes and uh, yeah and another thing that we can do as a group, if you look back into 2012 and now what's happened during this last seven years, that we came into realization of the world group identity and realization of this group unity. And that's the big achievement. And for the next seven years, for us, will be the task to learn to work effectively as the world group, mastering all those numerous techniques that's been given to us and been waiting for this time. Mm. And if we as a world group will learn in the next seven years to work effectively and be effective in multiple areas of our service, then that will create an elevation for the world group and resulting in the creating, if I can say this kind of pulling vacuum for the aspirants and people of goodwill who would come to this place that we been occupying, so to speak, for a long time. So by elevating as a group, we will create the pool for activation of a much wider circle in the world group and in humanity as a whole. Over. And I'm passing the microphone to Steve. Yes. Wonderful, thank you. Excellent um, plans and prognosis. Um, inspiring, thank you. Thank you, Sasha. Hi, everybody. Um, my response to this question is, first of all, that it's a, to, for me, it is a slightly abstract question. For me, the more real question is for First of all, to affirm, for me, what I mean by the world group 
is the group of all truly profoundly esoteric workers from every tradition in the ageless wisdom teachings. That includes the profound intuitive thinkers in the Rudolf Steiner movement. It includes the deepest thinkers in the Sri Aurobindo movement. It includes the deepest thinkers in this great movement of Christian um, circle, Richard Raw, all the circles of compassion that are providing these profoundly esoteric meditation circles. So the world group is, is that group of esoteric workers who each have their own traditions to build the antikarana and the alignment between um, personality and soul, between mind, um, between physical, astral, mental, all those levels of the antikarana. So that's the world group. And for me, the dynamic now is as an Alice Bailey student, I know that Hierarchy will be doing a particular piece of work in 2025, which is very significant in the conditioning of the energies within which we work. As human beings, in our responsibility, I look at the groups with which I'm involved with. So that's a Lucis Trust group, primarily. Our Life Red Circle is a very small circle. We meet from time to time. It's less of a of a substantial heart-beating group with its feet on the ground. Lucis Trust is dedicated and more alive. I've worked for the Lucis Trust for 40 years. I'm I, maybe more, I'm not sure, but it is more aligned to being open to transformation and to taking month by month to hold a point of tension and to build that tension. And if we do that as a concrete act, as you said, um, Philip. Uh, no, sorry, Jeff, um, use these meditations of the, given by the Tibetan. Use the teachings to give by the Tibetan to push us as groups, not as individuals or spokespeople or something, but as a group to lift the alignment so that the group is able to radiate a new de depth of intuitive creativity in my experience, I would love it if we would talk about the groups that we're involved with. What do we see happening in the group mind and heart? My experience of observing the group mind and heart that we work with in the Lucis Trust is that it is moving in a way I have never seen it move before. Mm -hmm. Is that, and the real push is for us to find, all of us in that group, to find our own authentic, soul inspired way of of way of engaging with this magnificent structure of the new group of world servers so that we can truly serve with language that is universal with language that speaks to the spiritual crisis of humanity and that we push ourselves to move past the language we're used to but to really communicate the note of the ashram and the potency of where we're headed that i think is that's my you know, each, each one would express this group life that I'm involved with in the Lucis Trust differently, but that's the way, that's my experience, that's what I see. <clears throat> thank you, so, thank Steve. You. Is, is that Steve of Nation? That's Sorry, Steve. I, you know, I, I, <laughs> Hey, Steve, Michael just realized who you are. <laughs> who are you, Michael? You're Michael, um... <laughs> Eloquent and um, yeah, exactly. And, and and as you say, you know, we we all some of us come from earlier days when the kinds of things that you are now talking about were not as possible. And uh, there's been such uh, such progress and such a dynamism that has been sweeping through. So we really uh, applaud that and are very very happy about the you know, the progress and all wish to be involved in this forward movement that it's making, uh, it's making possible. So thank you so much, Steve. I was, I, I was going to say now, you know, what, what I was going to say that what you're saying is beautiful and eloquent and who are you? And, you know, <laughs> and now I, I have nice. it. That's it's all fallen out. into place. All <laughs> fallen into place. Yes. So do we have Martin or? Billy who do it? Who uh, are, are there any more people here from the Life Bridge that are going to be speaking about uh, what it means? What was the mm. question again, dear? 
Where does it mean anything for us this coming five years? And what specifically and how are we working with Towards it? Towards yes. that mm -hmm. conclave, that's yes, right. Yes, yes. And uh, it's uh, Katya from uh, Leverage. If I can uh, add to what was said before, so to me, the, the task is we have five long and at the same time very short years to really truly start integrating the consciousness of the groups into that group consciousness of the new group mm -hmm. uh, and it is a task of, of integration of many on many levels but the main thing is working with the group consciousness and realizing group uh, karma working like tran transmuting it in a way that that will allow us to actually rise into the group consciousness truly deeply standing on that ground working as one um truly really loving one another and um our fellow on the path thank you i'm, I'm all done thank you Thank, thank you, thank you, Katya. Uh, excellent. And, and we have yes. uh, Dot Maver joined us uh, here in the circle. So I invite Dot. Who has joined? I'm Dot sorry. Maver has. Dot oh, Maver Dot. has joined oh, Michael Dot. Robbins. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> so yes, and grateful, so grateful to be part of this circle at LifeBridge and the larger circle. And if I understand the question, what I'd like to share is from the perspective of birth 2012 that we celebrated here at LifeBridge as part of a world group that began to bridge uh, the new group of world servers uh, beyond a ring pass knot and well into mainstream is how I would say it. And what the realization uh, through our work is, and I'll speak through the lens of the global silent minute that occurred yesterday, the reach was tremendous and still is. It's a ripple effect that just keeps on keeping on. It seems that the new group of world servers as we know it, particularly the esoteric community, over the past seven years has come together to know itself as, as lip, a living demonstration of the revelation of our times, oneness. We are the planetary server now. And to identify in that oneness gives us, affords us the opportunity to look at this next seven year cycle and specifically the next few years to 2025 to, expand our reach, so to speak, but from that realization of oneness that touches hearts and minds in a way that our ring pass knot just keeps ex expanding so that when hierarchy takes a good look as 2025 approaches, that light is so bright, decisions have to be made in a way to, to what we know is the probability if we could all wake up and and realize this revelation so and that there is no separateness et cetera, et cetera. so that's what that's what i think and however we choose to do that at the very least coming together for the equinoxes and solstices as one group i think is absolutely critical and joyful and I, as you can probably feel through my voice right now i'm, I'm still pretty um pretty much the kite from yesterday and uh, somebody better be holding the string but it's <laughs> it just it just feels yeah, to yeah. me like yeah exactly we're on a threshold here and thank you for calling the question thank you dot those are such worthy thoughts um yes what dear wrong in image wrong image <laughs> oh, yeah. i seem to be providing <laughs> wrong images yeah. Okay. Is there anyone now who would like to uh, say something? Philippe? Martin's, Martin's hand was raised, and then Kim Knight wrote that she wanted to share. Right. Okay, so 
Um, Martin, go ahead. Thank you, Michael. I just wanted to add briefly because, uh, yeah, much of what you have already said uh, is in line with what I feel. This feeling of that we are coming together, that uh, the vision, what was the vision for so many years of uh, being an, an active, uh, coordinated work in terms of service, in terms of expression of spiritual energy, is coming into expression. So probably as as we are seeing today in the world, many individuals here and there, and even many organized groups, which are very materialistic in their approach. Uh, I think we are also beholding the emergence of, of the group, uh, the world servers, as the other person saying. So uh, I think it's very challenging uh, to, to keep very clear the vision and the, this esoteric work of uh, having the this Santa Carana or this uh, inner connection uh, with the whole of humanity open. And probably this would mean, or perhaps this would mean, maybe this is a question, uh, to leave behind many uh, esoteric uh, concrete ideas or, or, or many much of our approach in terms of what we believe is uh, the, the subjective work. So that's what I have to say. Thank you. Thank you very much. You know, um, even as it has been suggested, that we can move from strength to strength and that our numbers and power and internal uh, focus and abilities are gathering, we, we all know this, that we cannot consider the next five years or so to be some kind of a, a cakewalk. It's, it's not going to be uh, easy at all because the more the forces of light arise and demonstrate their strength and and uh, sway internally in a lawful lawful manner the consciousnesses of humanity the more the counterforce will arise as well and uh, i think we, we we really have to remember that we are the the group uh descendants of john the baptist and his life was intense. Interestingly enough, he was an initiate of the second degree, which is what uh, Master D.K. tells us. And uh, he, he was a Gemini individual, and uh, I suspect he spent a lot of time in water, that Pisces was there too. And he had a very sacrificial life. When When we start thinking about our own descent from this uh, great prophet, you know, and was he Elijah before, you know, the, the story goes perhaps, uh, that we also have an arduous road ahead. And I, I wouldn't want that to be discounted. And the more strength that arises from us, I believe the more the forces of opposition will attempt to stop it. So. This is going to be a, a powerful esoteric contest between the forces of good and the forces that want to throw uh, human beings back into their, uh, strictly into their personality considerations. I just hope we're ready for this, and I think, um, I think we can be ready for this. Now, let's see. Um, was there anybody else there at the Life Bridge? that wanted to speak, and then we'll go to the associated members and then the people that uh, came aboard, and we'll make sure that we, uh, uh, that we do capture you there. Uh, let's see, is it Kay? Who's, who's uh, we, are, we are good now here in the, at LiveBridge, but we might have some other people joining who will share later. A little bit later. Now, my, yes. uh, ourselves. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So as a matter of fact, but since you've had your hand up for actually, Philip has. Well, yeah, he does. But this, um, where is? Who is the lady? Was it? Um, Karen? It was Kim Knight. Who was it? It was Kim. Karen. Kim. 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 Ah, Kim. Kim Knight. Sorry, you're dealing with the hearing of an older man. Uh, Okay, Kim, please 
you had a thought you wanted to express some time ago. So please go ahead. Yeah, hi, can you hear me? Uh, yes, if you speak slowly and distinctly with more volume than usual. Okay, I'll do my best. <laughs> Um, I can't, sorry, I can't remember the name of the person who was talking about, he said, I'd be interested to know what other groups are doing. And I, uh, I just wanted to share something because, and I'm sorry if I'm not too succinct, I always get a little nervous talking uh, okay. like this. Okay. Um, but I've been very privileged to, to be uh, learning from a, a, a real master of wisdom. And I wouldn't like to hesitate at which, you know, initiation <laughs> he is at. But we have been, a group of us have been training with him. He's from, he's from China um, for the past 10 years. And he has developed uh, a system of self-realization, which takes one, takes one up the ladder of self-realization through the various initiations. And, and basically in the last uh, couple of years, two, two, of, two of the group have reached self-enlightenment. Uh, uh, um, and I'm, I'm, I think it equates to the third initiation. And it's really amazing. And what was so interesting was that when I, I, I sent an email to the Lucis Trust several months ago inquiring about the Arcane School, I think it's called, and <clears throat> and they they sent back a really lovely document about the uh, sorry I'm just getting the title here um, the esot the new esoteric schools you know that are coming uh, in the near future, and as I was reading this document, I had this really strong feeling of oh okay that's what he this is this is one of these new esoteric schools. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to share that. <laughs> well, yes. Uh, yes, we all are inspired by different people, of course, and we are enthusiastic to mention what we are deriving from the process. So thank you for sharing um, that process that you're going through for 10 years now, as, as you say. Um, it, it's not for anyone else but yourself uh, to decide the the value of what is transpiring you know i don't think any of us is in the position of passing judgment on uh, other uh, teachers of a positive light uh, not generally anyway there are some people who are really perpetuating glamours and we know it and they are the very glamours that master dk pointed out and we recognize in the labors of hercules uh, Bucyrus when we meet Bucyrus. But in general, it is up to every student and uh, teacher to work out their own uh, internal and external connections. So just thank you for sharing the benefit that you have uh, derived from working with this particular teacher. Now, it's a very vast subject, you know, the new esoteric schools. I just want to say that in addition to the 14 schools, seven preparatory and seven advanced schools, every nation of any type of reasonable mental spiritual development will have its own esoteric school as well. So it is a vast, um, uh, a vast project. And according to the Tibetan, it is overseen by... Uh, the Christ, of course, Master Moria, Master Kutumi, Master Jualkul, Master Hilarion, an English master, and Master Rakotsi, uh, the Count, the, the Master R. Those are, in, in his teaching, the ones that are responsible, at least for these schools, of the kind that he is uh, pro has been promoting and telling us about. So thank you, Kim. Uh, now, let's, um, okay, let's move on. So then Philip wanted. Yes, yeah. let's go to Philip. As soon as I find you, Philip, in this, this, uh, 
Where is it? Hi there. Can well, you hear me okay? okay? okay. Yeah, 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 you're good, you're good. Very good. Um, thanks, Michael and Tia, for facilitating this, this um, webinar. And uh, it's great to be here with all our group brothers and sisters. Um, as far as the question goes, for the next five years, well, I'll, I'll just keep on doing what I've been doing, I guess, uh, trying to raise awareness um, by my newsletters and writings, um, examining the, the astro-historical view uh, in cycles, trying to um, analyse current world events and, and how they are reflecting uh, changes, social changes, political changes and so forth. Um, I, I liaise with uh, many different groups and individuals, so that will continue as well. And, um, and also, uh, what's, what's really coming into realisation that a few people have touched upon is that there was an integration occurring in the last few years that's it's very palpable now. And that uh, the, uh, that, that, that potency of, of this group is, is starting to increase and expand. And um, I've noticed in the last uh, year or so with the focus on various politics around the world in, in the United States and Britain and so forth, that gaining a greater awareness of um, directing energy through the planetary centres and various triangulations between cities like Geneva, Brussels, London, for instance. And I think we're getting to the stage now where this can be a far more conscious activity. We've been directing energy through the five planetary centres for, for years. Uh, but what's emerging, at least for me right now, is, is a much deeper understanding of the energies uh, with each of the five planetary centres, what each of those centres represent the ray forces and the astrological forces associated with them, and in a way how the, the, um, the full moon meditations can be, can be uh, made more effective uh, at, at particular um, zodiac full moons where the, the energy can be directed through that planetary centre. Anyway, um, I've written a fair bit about this so um, people can, can look at that if they want to. Um, and the other thing that's been occurring to me is, is around this global silent minute, which really took off and, and reached many people. And there's no reason why that can just be for now. That can continue uh, on a daily or weekly basis. And I was even thinking that the, that the uh, midday reflection could be a, a one minute or five minute focus for everyone. Uh, from now on, um, to really consolidate and to uh, keep this energy going. And of course, uh, just briefly, this week uh, is a particularly unique one, as Jeff said before, uh, because of the solar eclipse, because of the balsamic moon that we're entering into now, between now and, and the new moon on Boxing Day. And primarily because of Jupiter being right at the heart of the solar eclipse. Mm. Jupiter, the planet of wisdom. Um, I think this is a really pivotal point, a very unique uh, seven year cycle that will, uh, I think, uh, really uh, enhance our approach to 2025. Mm -hmm. It is interesting uh, that he has said that when you have a, a fall position like Jupiter and Neptune in Capricorn, that actually is, is a kind of uh, exaltation. So we can expect a, a, a powerful second ray impulse uh, in supernal light from this particular position associated with the eclipse. So there's so many ways to approach this according to the uh, different ashrams that we may be associated with, but largely it's the first and second ray ashrams that have been uh, quite fairly successful in following DK's work more so for a while than the other other groups, and we have plenty 
to keep us busy. I think you're doing a fantastic job traveling and uh, linking uh, people together. Uh, when when Tuya and I, uh, we, we've done about, um, not fully, but a hundred of the almost 200 nations of the world. And uh, we have videos on these things. They're not, you know, expert videos yet, anything like that. But we study carefully the rays that are given or not given, the astrology that is given or not given, because usually dates of incorporation are given, and the particular problems of each one of these nations and their resources and so forth. And we find uh, we'll be discussing this whole idea about the esoteric approach to strengthening uh, United Nations work, a kind of esoteric uh, United Nations that's been in the air and has been uh, talked about as an important approach. And in a few days, I think we'll be getting to that. But I just want to say that you certainly are a world traveler, and I'm sure that you're doing your your best bit to link up the energies uh, as they must be linked. And I've heard of the other groups. Uh, I think Steve and some others have gone to Darjeeling uh, in an activation mode, uh, helping that very esoteric center to uh, to animate, to animate. Of course, we just don't know. It's Moria's town, you know. We just don't know what the timing is there, but it's the most esoteric center. And, uh, and efforts are being made accordingly. So thank you, Philip. Um, oh, did, you did, you did I, uh, and <laughs> did you say an Ajna Center, did you say? Can I just make a comment about the Ajna Center, which Steve touched upon before, the um, two major lobes of the, of the Ajna Center and how the new group of world service uh, embodies yes, the yes. center. And yes. um, it, it may be obvious to, to some of you, but I just thought I'd re reiterate the fact that those 48 times two petals, which makes 96 petals of the Ajna Center from the intuitive lobe and the, and the, and the, the mental lobe, Venus Mercury, um, uh, represented by all the, um, mainly, I suspect, uh, objective uh, groups of uh, world service and individuals. Um, and I, I, I suspect that the, the minority of the groups is, are the esoteric workers. And that perhaps the esoteric workers work with the, the left lobe, the mercury lobe, and the objective workers work more in the uh, Venus lobe. But uh, this is just a, a theory. Maybe they're scattered mm. through both. Lobes. But um, as far as I can understand, I think the esoteric workers must be the proportion of them must be minuscule compared to the uh, to the rest of the new growth of world service. Uh, but uh, I guess there is um, uh, esoteric knowledge that those esoteric workers have, so their their power is magnified. If of course they're applying uh, what they've been taught. Mm. Yes, thank you. I'm doing doing my best, you know, to to understand every word that I can. Just um, for people who are a little hard of hearing as I am, just slow it down and you know punctuate it. It would 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 help me. But look, I think it's uh, raised two and five as far as the city is concerned, and uh, Scorpio and what else? Well, Something. I wasn't talking about that. I was just talking Dark about the, the as a whole, um, and. Darjeeling is Scorpio with a second ray soul, fifth ray personality, yeah. Yeah, and a first ray uh, planetary center role. Well, you know, these yeah. energies are fantastic, and we can use the destiny of the nations as a real handbook to uh, weave things together in a productive uh, manner. And where we are not given the info, I have a feeling it will be coming in the next installment, and we can sort of divine it uh, by studying the dates of incorporation and other things. We want to function intelligently in this whole uh, process. Ah, oh, yeah, okay, thank you. Thank you, Philip. <coughs> thank you, Philip. We have Antonella. We have, 
you know, pretty soon I'm just going to open it up. To okay, the whole... Antonella. Yes, yeah. okay, well, there she is. So please, Antonella, uh, whatever the yes. question was. Um, just yes, you can. Mean... Uh, I have to jump in. <laughs> yeah, um, what strikes me is um, always the um, signs of the heavens that can uh, uh, reveal what uh, we are living as uh, this planetary server, uh, which is now uh, a reality, a, a fact. So, um, the fact that towards 2025, as we uh, spoke of yesterday in, in the webinar about that, about the solstice, is that the next year we will have some conjunctions which are so, so uh, amazing or important, because we will have uh, the end of the year, this conjunction between the, the love and light of the solar system which are saturn light and jupiter love in the sign of aquarius and it is the first time since the 14 4 the mm -hmm. beginning of the 15th century so this is a, a, a sign that uh, recalls us this um atmosphere of the renaissance and it's just in while we are entering uh, officially, so to speak, in the Aquarius age, uh, instead of um, 500 years ago, we were definitely uh, still in Pisces, in the age of Pisces. So this sign that we have this uh, first ray Pluto, second ray Jupiter, third ray Saturn, all in the Mount of Transfiguration, um, we reminded yesterday this quote from Esoteric Astrology 167, which says, when love, Jupiter, and mind, Saturn, and will, Pluto and Vulcan, meet on the Mount of Transfiguration, they reveal the secret of the hidden glory. So we are really living next year a momentous uh, step towards 2025 and I think the masters know that and the astrologers in hierarchy know that mm. and yeah so and and in January we will have this conjunction of Saturn and Pluto which the last time in uh, in this sign of Capricorn was again in uh, 1518 at the time of Renaissance um, so what I, what strikes me is this we have great signs of the heavens we have the 2025 we have this global mini silence which asserts that the fact that we are one one disciple in as a new group of world servers so um, we are uh, we have as dot reminded the possibility to uh, consolidate uh, this fact and through rhythmic approach through meetings in silence in the power of silence in the equinoxes and solstices which are the cross of the breath or the major breath of the planetary logos his ritual so that's that's something and my my sense is really that we are um, the hidden glory is has to do with this the power of the silence as a, a real action we are like um, uh, consolidating this um, soul of humanity at the causal level in a more and more conscious way and from that level from that point of tension we have the the duty and the task to to not lose the dates to not lose these five years and we know from Agni Yoga that that in five years everything can change so yeah. that's what thank you thank you very much very interesting so do we have um, are, there, are there anyone else in the 
group that has been working with 2025 specifically. Um, and then we can just open the uh, floor to whoever wants to speak about it. Uh, you know, um, Philip, Philip has his hand up again. Okay. Let's, I'm, I'm getting there. Um, yes, uh, Philip, go ahead, please. I was just going to follow on from what Antonella said um, with regard to these these conjunctions coming up of, of Saturn and Pluto in January. And I think between the solar eclipse uh, this week and that Saturn-Pluto conjunction in, in the new year, there's probably going to be a major planetary crisis, mm -hmm. uh, which is what Michael was saying before, that the next four years could be quite a bumpy ride um, as the forces of, of light and materialism face off in, in many ways. And um, also, of course, this, this um, Jupiter-Saturn conjunction uh, in the first degree of Aquarius that Antonella was talking about uh, truly will be the forerunner for the Aquarian age. That it's like the, the hump that we go over to between Pisces and Aquarius, I think, to, to really, that really ushers in the Aquarian age. Um, and uh, just segueing into the 2025 theme that you were just mentioning, um, I've got a, a, a made a list of things in one of my newsletters about about 2025. So it may just help provide a, a, a bit of a structure for the ongoing discussion. And so I'll just read them off. Um, we have the planned reappearance of the hierarchy soon after 2025. We don't know when that's going to be either, of course. It could be in 50 years' time that they decide to reappear. Uh, we are in the middle of the Pisces Aquarius cusp between the 1700s and 2200. We're in the overlapping cycles of the outgoing sixth ray of devotion and incoming seventh ray of magic and order. We have the fourth ray of harmony through conflict coming slowly into manifestation coming slowly into manifestation, quote unquote, after 2025. We have Pluto's 2024 entry into Aquarius with the destruction of Capricorn crystallization that may be completed by then. We have Neptune's 2025 entry into Aries, symbolizing Christ as Neptune, Aries the Ram, the Lamb of God, etc. We have Uranus's 2025 entry into Gemini, its previous 84 year cycle was in 1941, which was the turning point of World War II, subjectively speaking. And we're at the halfway mark of a 49 year cycle of a decision initiation taken in 2001. And lastly, of course, the conclave is at the 25 year mark of every century where the Lord of the World and the Council of Shambhala and Hierarchy uh, decide when the externalization is going to take place. And that is the big question. When will it happen? Many of us are hoping it's going to happen sooner rather than later, but uh, it could be much later, depending on decisions that humanity itself makes that may that may uh, hold back the externalization for up to a century even. That mm. is possible. So that's all I have to say there, thanks. Thank you, Philip. There is that uh, page in externalization um... I think page 699, where it basically tells us that the conclave um, plans in all probability will be laid for the first stages of the actual externalization. Of course, that was a long time ago, 80 years ago, and a lot has changed since then. And DK did tell us there could be delay. It would be brought on by humanity itself and it would not last more than 300 years, he said. So we don't mm -hmm. really know entirely where we stand, but there's some very inspiring material in externalization about how the, yes. uh, the masters and their initiates and disciples establish themselves in the planetary centers. And, yes. and that's going to take a little while, of course. But already in 2025, if things are appropriate and there's 
a reasonable degree of peace uh, before the Christ can come and a reasonable degree of planned uh, policy sharing between the nations and the house cleaning is already happening, then maybe they can move ahead and uh, prepare actually uh, for the coming out of certain of these masters. And I would give it a hundred years. Absolutely. I know we're not supposed to speculate upon this stuff too much, but uh, it will take a hundred years before we really are into the very uh, last degrees of Aquarius and uh, have the uh, 30th degree lined up in the year 2117, which can be considered the beginning of the Aquarian age. That's 98 years from now. I think it's going to take that long to build the planetary centers. And we have to do everything we can. See, we spent a lot of time this afternoon talking about how we can really prepare ourselves and our groups over the years past this particular time of the festival to strengthen the emergence of the intended uh, divine plan. So that everyone's going to go about that in a different way, of course. Um, now, let's see. I think we can, um, and Alexander, you let me know if I'm correct here. Um, I think we can open this up to uh, anyone at this point. Um, and let's see, Antonella, is your hand up or <laughs> or is it just one of those hang on hands? You know, the. <laughs> It's just a quick add to what you said and Philip said. That is, um, we reminded this uh, in different um, webinars in the last few days. But I think it's important to uh, sound again here. Um, is this quote from Esoteric Astrology and Sacred Doctrine, which says, the sign of the Messias coming is the conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn in the sign Pisces. Yes. Kepler, yes. Kep, yeah, Kepler states as a positive fact that at the moment of the incarnation of Christ, all the planets were in conjunction in the sign Pisces, the constellation of the Messiah. So the fact that uh, we will have this conjunction of Jupiter and Saturn uh, in the sign of Aquarius, which we know is the sign of hierarchy, while Taurus is the sign associated yes. to the new group of our service, we could infer um, that one of the next four conjunctions between Jupiter and Saturn could be this sign of the coming of Maitreya. And mm -hmm. uh, the, the dates of this uh, uh, it depends, as you said, Michael, it depends from the preparation of humanity and the dates of this for uh, conjunction are exactly 2020, 2080, uh, 2139 and 2199, heliocentrically, mm -hmm. but more, more or less also geocentrically because they are slow planets. So I was thinking that that date of the 21, 17 indicated as the official beginning of the age of Aquarius is exactly encompassed by this next 180 years, which is the um, range um, for those two giants, those two giants of the solar system to uh, be in conjunction in a similar element. So we had 180 years of their conjunctions in sign of Earth. So Capricorn, Virgo and uh, Taurus. But the next two, uh, 200, uh, around 200 years, we will have their conjunctions in Aquarius, Gemini, Gemini and Libra, which is, we know mm -hmm. that the key is expansion. So it's really something this possible sign of the coming of Maitreya as one of these four dates. Um, it, it, it could certainly be, uh, you know, there turned up that letter that uh, DK had written to Roberto Sagioli, who had many questions about esoteric points. 
And one of those points was about the beginning of the Aquarian Age, and DK gave him a technical answer. And it just so happens to be the same year that Venus again transits the face of the sun. Very mm. interesting in that way. So look, you know, uh, Antonella, you keep us, you and Philip, you're very good with this uh, <laughs> uh, kind of cyclic astrology and when things occur. Keep us informed of the sure. possibilities. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Antonella. Sure. Thanks, Mike. Yes. Now, anybody who would like to say something, ask something, speak to some point, you either write it down or you raise your hand and you can speak. And I think Suzanne has been here for quite a while. Um, and she's had a couple of points. Uh, perhaps for some of us, it might be a good thing uh, to do a sound review via DK book references to the actual factual info on the Asian Center. You know, in a way, uh, Suzanne, that's what we did a little bit this afternoon. We said that anything that you can say of the human Asian Center, you might be able to transpose analogically to the um, Asian Center of Sanat Kumara. So indeed, we were working on that and there's a lot more to do. And uh, Kim did her sharing, uh, et cetera. I hope that I, what I said made sense. Yes, it's okay. Don't worry. Don't worry at all. And um, so, yes, we'll use the law of analogy whenever we uh, possibly can. And we were really working on that today. There's so many fascinating... It all has to do with the initiatory status of Sanat Kumara and of the planetary logos and of the rays which activate various centers, such as the Ajna Center, namely the fifth ray and the fourth ray, uh, eventually, and the planet Venus. It has, and it has much to do with these kinds of technical matters, what, how the new group of world servers develops. It's connected with Venus, the Ajna Center, fifth ray, and yet Taurus is a fourth Ray sign, and the new group of world servers is not only ruled by Taurus, but is ruled by the harmonizing fourth ray. Okay, dear, is there anybody else there? Um, if not, because now we have been one and a half, or one. The night hour. is young. One and a half hours here. Yeah. <laughs> so. Um, Here's Joe having a, a statement. Oh, goodness, that's a, that's a big one. Uh, let's see. Joe, uh, what do we got here? Uh, <coughs> oh, yes, yes, yes. Well, okay, now, you know, this is certainly possible, Kim, and there are many um, excellent teachers, and, uh, and in terms of the externalization of masters and initiates, it is... Uh, it is under underway. So it is an important subject, of course, and it can be taken up in uh, yet another context. Here's Joe, my experience. There has developed a greater clarity and expression of a continuity of consciousness that vibrates harmonically among those gathered and meditating within the context development and in laying the groundwork for our approach in the next few years. It has been apparent that within the 2025 initiative, Lightbridge, our esoteric astrologers, oh, now I see what you were saying there. It's not Lightbridge, but Lightbridge. Okay. Loses trust, uh, loses triangles workers, and the many facilitators around the globe since the Aries Equinox Silent Minute in 2019. Philip's suggestion that this be continued is on the spot. Okay, right. Thank you, Joe. Thank you very much. Now, other thoughts? Karen. Karen would like to say something, and please go ahead, Karen. Yes, hello, everyone. And I'm slowly, wondering if... 
Yep. I'm wondering if at the conference, the upcoming conference of the Seven Ray Institute, if there will be discussion um, and a summary or a consolidation of our experiences this week. And in a similar discussion as we're having now is what is our vision for the next seven years since it is a ray for conference. It's a very good idea. And uh, naturally, the number four, which is the theme for us, is the new group of world servers, Ray. And we're holding it in Taurus, interestingly, of course, sometimes Aries, sometimes Taurus. Taurus recently, the new group of world servers, Sign. So we're in a good position to review what has been proposed, what has been accomplished this week, and to think ahead towards um, the development over the next seven years. Now, I'll tell you what, you just be the, you just be the bee, you know, and, and remind us, and we will do our best to make sure that that kind of session does occur. So thank you, uh, Karen. Now, anybody else that wishes to say or ask anything? I'm so grateful that some of you people who have been intimately aware, uh, working with the 2025 group and in 2025 in general, um, experienced workers as you are, have shared your point of view. Because we all need to, to hear that. And we'll get this. Um, we'll get this program um, kind of uh, um, adapted and uh, converted as rapidly as we can. We're we're working under its peculiar circumstances. We have a class here. The class has to hear. They don't have computers in front of them. They have to hear in the air, as it were. We have to use speakers and so forth. And hopefully something comes of it. I believe so. So I was just thinking because uh, we have been here one and a half hours, so that um, uh, we are not going to continue too long anymore. But what about uh, and because our subject is upon the twenty-five. So if you would be thinking yourself at the moment that you are now on twenty-five on that conclave. And you are gracefully approaching to hierarchy. So, what are the things what you would be bringing with you, offering what you have been learning on? What 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 is that that is important us to recognize? So, because it's it's something uh, that this um, life. <laughs> We all have been born here. We all have to do something. We, we could share even one word. What would be that word to, to bring forth? What, what hierarchy could be using or what Christ could be using? Maybe it's a summary of our experience, mm -hmm. our anticipated experience during the next five years. It's like what we hope will have emerged from our labors during the next five years, which we uh, present as a, uh, a testimony of our uh, relationship yeah. to the plan, to the hierarchy. Actually, I w it's a better one, a uh, better way. Okay. What is the vision, what we should be carrying forth? I think that is more okay. important. It has to be brief, of course, right? Yes, yes, brief vision. Synthesized vision, what we should be carrying on. Hmm. Well, let, let me just start that. Can mm -hmm. I yes. uh, say something? I would like to see evidence of the success uh, in improving the quality of human life coming from the seven externalizing ashrams and those who serve in those ashrams especially at the moment it's ray one and two and five as dk gives it but all of them are very very important i'd like to see what is the gift of the ashram uh, various ashrams what they have contributed uh, over the next few years 
that's my vision that something will really have uh, become evident in terms of the quality that they have contributed. Mm -hmm. So in my vision, what I am holding is about that humanity will now come together and uh, solve these problems which are related to, to climate. Mm -hmm. That um, there would be a real, real effort to, to understand how life is in all levels and that we now has to take actions, real actions, to carry forth that there is possibility for all the kingdoms survive. It's liable to be forced upon us. And um, I think a common enemy oftentimes draws people together. And by the way, anybody who's out here in our group, please, you can respond as well, okay? For sure. Okay, is there anybody that has a, a sense of a vision of what could arise during the next five years, the product of it, to take us to that point where hierarchy can make its next step forward? Because they do judge and gauge according to the condition of humanity. So there is Isabel Powers from Chile. Okay. She was offering the word unity is my vision and what we need worldwide. Okay. Thank you. Yes. It uh, has to be created, doesn't it? Synthesis is and the unity has to be created. Not an easy thing, but uh, eventually it will be so. Thank you, Isabel. Um, Anything else? We're not going to force you to say, you know, what it must be. <laughs> <laughs> you know, speak up or that's it. <laughs> okay. Suzanne says accord. accord. Suzanne typed, yeah, she typed that in above the word is Isabel. Accord. It's a word like harmony, isn't it? Am I mistaken? Accord? Accord? Uh-huh, okay. Well, look. Chef, chef. What am I missing here? What did you say? I said it is unified. Yeah, accord. Yes, accord. All in accord. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. Chef. Now, Suzanne Jeff, like further wrote, this webinar proves the possibility that, though diverse in some ways, we are of one accord. Yes, yes, exactly. Well, the Buddha, it's the Buddha emerging. It's the plane of harmony. Helen says science will establish the existence of the soul. I know, I know it will, and that France will be the, the locus of that establishment. Um, I believe it will take a little while. Uh, I don't expect it in five years. Uh, you know, so much more about etheric science has to be developed. But Helen, it is on its way. Okay, Jeff, now you go ahead. Wait a second. What's wrong? You're self muted, Jeff. Just be, become green if you can. Sorry about that, the button is sticking. Um, so, um, you know, the master tells us that um, one of the responsibilities of the disciple in train is precipitate your own crisis and of course we know this in our own individual um, work and development and we know this in terms of um, our group work of um, you know the crisis of integration and, and of the various opportunities of rise but we are not coordinated that or organized more specifically in that regard as far as the wider group the new group of world service now, we can see there's been this steady development of this group. It is steadily being organized to the point even now where we could even use this gathering as such an example. What type of crisis would we precipitate in relation to hierarchy and humanity you know, that would move the entire group forward 
that's an, uh, quite a different type of dynamic. Now, in, when I, as I mentioned before, the Dynatu uh, meditations are specifically deal with um, energy transferences between the centers, you know, the heart center, the throat, and the Ajna center, and the head center. And they're occultly specific in that manner. If it is so that the Zubrick World Service represents an energy form, the Ajna center, then this work becomes even more potent for us as an entire group to coordinate our efforts in this regard. And um, of course, for myself, I'd see well, well in, in what way could that be um, more specific? Mm. And, um, mm. if, you know, and given Philip's mentioned and Antonella that uh, the coming crisis, planetary crisis of some kind, we don't know perhaps what that could look like, but we certainly can have a hand in precipitating our own group crisis as far as the opportunity is presented. And um, we can formulate that for ourselves and action. Mm -hmm. So those are my thoughts on that. Now, in, in this particular work, um, the heart center seems to me to be the uh, physical organ in all of this, you know, represented um, by the group hierarchy, of course, and then there's the heart center, you know, the 12 foot of locus, the 12 portions of that. And um, when you look at these um, different qualities in terms of their um, magnitude and their application to group life, this is just stunning, you know. It's quite phenomenal. Um, the particular word form is that it's contemplated on what they can bring in for us you know, in terms of coordinating and a group effort. So, um, for myself, I've been looking at the four main, the four main temples, which are uh, you're all familiar together with the twelve qualities themselves that the master has given us. But the four main foundational pillars of life, synthesis, sacrifice, and identification really seem applicable to uh, the group work, given that life is um, becoming, the life pedal is becoming more orientated to the constellation of Aquarius, you know, mm. and therefore a new vibrancy is, is entering in. And we, in our way, are becoming more responsive to, to that. This um, uh, next pedal down would be synthesis, you know. And here we are now in the sign of synthesis by excellence. And to me, this relates to um, the, the dovetailing coordination of all the mix and variety of groups that make up what we call the body of the new group of world service. And there does seem to be the second ray synthetic influence permitting the group and drawing those factors together, you know, in a more coordinated manner than yes. it's ever been. Yes. That's phenomenal. Thank you, Jim. So interesting yeah. about the Jupiter, the second ray, and the art of coordination. Yeah. Uh, it is a coordinating planet. It has a lot of seventh ray with it. And uh, it, it, in some of the things we've just been reading, it did imply that an increasing degree of uh, organization would come to the new group of world servers. Right now, it's not meant to be regimented in any way and it's left to grow in a spontaneous manner and yet all of yes. us have to identify and understand the work that's being done by the representatives of the different ashrams i just want to ask some of you here in our group are closer to the speaker than tuya and i are can anyone um, list what you consider to be jeff's main points okay 
there's something going on with that speaker, I suspect. And you don't have a call, do you? Are you okay? Yeah, no, I have a call, but um, there's, there's some sound playing up here on the scene. Ah, okay. Some sound playing. I think okay. So. Well, we're, yeah. we're doing our best there to understand because you always have something of value uh, to offer. Um, but let's just say this and keep it simple. The heart, the birth of the Christ in the heart. We cannot overlook this impending first initiation. And we're told something very interesting, that when the Christ reappears, it will signal that humanity has taken the first initiation. That's very interesting. And, you know, we cannot say when this will be occurring, but usually Vulcan and Pluto are not easy to deal with. And humanity is, has been going through an Armageddon and a Vulcan and Pluto experience and will continue to do so in order to be able to take this first heart opening initiation. So, you know, that seems to be one of the main points that was emerging, that and the harmonization and coordination. Okay, so thank you, uh, Jeff. Thank you. Now, let's see, is, is there anybody else here? And then we will, I think, finish off with a few it's mantrams. Philip, is that old ah. hand or new hand? Hey, Philip, do you have an old hand in the air or a new hand? Uh, wait a second, wait a second. <laughs> Okay. It's, it's an old new hand. Um, <laughs> okay. As a sound. It sounds very good. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, I'm sorry. Just can I briefly? It's Katja. It's uh, from Live Bridge. Bridget. One uh, Live Bridge. Live Bridge, Katja, 2025. Okay, Live Bridge is uh, has a hand in the yeah. air, a group hand is in the air. Yeah. Okay, yeah. hold on, light bridge here. Yes, quick sharing. So the um, sharing about the sharing. So one of the visions, you know, that came was the um, actually developing at least some measure of true sharing. And there is one project that's going on, uh, which is sus sustainable development goals. And uh, I believe that if we support that, um, that will aid to that cause. Um, true sharing as a group, as a, as, a, as, a, as a whole humanity, because through that crisis, that's gonna be needed, very much so. With all that we have now on the planet, learning how to share in depth, for real. Um, that would be a necessary thing to, for 2025 to happen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's all from my grades. Thank you very much. Mm. Thank you. I think the degree of sharing essentials is going to increase dramatically over the next few years. We might as well take the risk, I think. Okay. Now, I think maybe two years, correct? Yes, is that Alexander? Yeah, it's Philip here. Can I just come back to that cycle thing I wanted to talk about? <laughs> what, what did he say? About to talk before That's... when Katya jumped uh, about the um, uh, two years question about 10 or 15 minutes ago about the, uh, what is it that we can work towards from 2025? And personally, I think that we haven't really scratch the surface of exploiting the information we have about the cycles that DK has given out, particularly the three-year, seven-year and nine-year cycles um, that involve <coughs> crisis the expansion and the emergence or impact on public consciousness. Yeah. In the next five years, the New Griffin World Service, at least the esoteric community, could become far more uh, build a greater efficacy in being able to, to work with these cycles more specifically and direct these energies through the planetary centers uh, 
more powerfully. And so in 2019, 2020, we are at the end of one of the three year cycles that began with crisis consolidation, 2017-18, tension mm. expansion, 2018-2019. And now we're entering to 2019-2020 with the emergence and impact upon public consciousness. So this is a very important year that's coming up for us in so many different ways. And um, if we, you know, I, I've been trying to understand these cycles for a long time and I still don't, can't really get my head around the whole thing mm. in terms of identifying those particular uh, cycles uh, of tension expansion, or in, for instance, and how that works out in the world, or how that works out subjectively. So a deeper study, I think, of these cycles that we've, we've been given the information, but I don't think we're really working with it uh, to full capacity. So just wanted to say that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great point. And also then Martin Teaser, he says, peace in synthetic coordinated manifestation. This is the vision, right. the vision that he's sharing. Is there, is there anybody in our group here uh, still awake that would like to share anything? Just how inspiring everyone's comments are. Mm. And how it lights a vision in my mind and I'm sure others. And thank you very much. Thank you. Was uh, it heard? Joanna, I hope so. I hope it was heard. Um, Did you yeah. hear? I'll just point, point that out. Did you hear Joanna's comment? That it was so nice to all of you. One more time. Maybe, maybe you can <laughs> throw it here. I changed, I changed the, uh, yeah, that's good. I've changed the microphone. Okay. I just said that everyone that has shared offered such a inspiring message that the vision is so much clearer in my mind, and I'm sure in others' mind, of the possibilities for 2025. And I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you. I think that came through quite clearly. That was nice. Anybody else among the living? So anyway, dearest friends, I think that we are heading towards closing our uh, sharing. We are going to have these uh, webinars still during the week. <coughs> And we are inviting all of you, and maybe you are uh, having suddenly some invitation in your email box, so study them continuously, frequently. And uh, let us continue of uh, having our intention towards this vision, because uh, if we look at the idea of that this group the World Service Group is about the Ashna Center, and uh, one of the purpose is to send forth the vision for the whole humanity. So we are, and this group is supposed to catch up, be open to the plan, and then via this group the manifestation goes forth, further and, and forth. And the way, the path is lighted to light the way the light bearers throw light upon the path. Every one of us in Master DK's work, regardless of our rays, we find ourselves to be light bearers of some kind, and humanity really needs the light. There's that wonderful, you know, about who faces the dark and how he revolves upon the pedestal of light and shines the light upon the travelers in the dark, and for them, the way is not so dark. And behind these light bearers and the people who are struggling blazes the light of hierarchy. So if we are ever going to carry the light and in responsible, uh, tactful, uh, in intelligent, effective ways, the next five years, we have to pass it on carry the light. And that's just what John the Baptist did. 
even though at times he felt he was a voice crying in the wilderness. There's one thing that we will not require, and that is the uh, eating of locusts. You, you don't have to have a diet of locusts. But everything else has to be fulfilled. Okay. <laughs> All right. So what we are going to do now to the end, I just uh, read a few sentences by DK about the fire of love. And then we will have, uh, again, bell ringing. Then we sound the mantra of unification. We have one minute silence. And then you hear again bells and we close the webinar. It is the fire of love which he will bring. It is the message of the purificatory fire which he will sound. He will not teach and end the waters of purification as has hitherto been the symbolic imparted truth. He will impart the fire which burns and destroys all barriers in man's nature, all separating walls between individuals, between groups, and between nations. Are you prepared as individuals, as disciples, and aspirants to submit yourselves to this fire? Son, so men are one, and I am one with them. I seek to love, not hate. I seek to serve, and not exact you service. Let pain bring reward of light and love. Let soul control the outer form, and life and all events, and bring to light the love that underlies the happenings all the time. Come and in sight, let the future stand revealed. Let inner union demonstrate and outer cleavages be gone. Let love prevail, let all men love. And one minute silence.